I'm Valerie, and today we're going to talk about Mara Jade. When I went to the Rogue One premiere at the Hollywood Palms in Naperville, I had a couple of people ask me why I was dressed as Mara Jade instead of as Rey. And there are a couple of reasons for that. One, the group that invited me already had a Rey, the marvelous Whitney Wickham. And number two, I have been kind of itching to do Mara a bit more. If you had seen my cosplay photos, the ones that were taken by Chris from Sockdologer Photography, the ones that were taken at Wizard World, you know that the Mara costume that I have completed at this point is modeled on the cover of Vision of the Future. There are a couple of reasons for this. One, I have made no bones about the fact that I hate the catsuit costume. I just I can't, ugh. There are people who carry it off very well, but I just, I don't like the proportions of it. I don't think it's practical. I have nothing against cat suits in a general sense, obviously. But, you know, at least when I do Natasha, I have a utility belt. I can carry stuff at cons. There is just nothing about that costume that it really properly feels like Mara to me. It doesn't feel practical. She's a very practical character to me. One of my first reactions, the very first time I saw it, thank you Dark Horse Comics, all your fault, is this is a character that Zahn repeatedly described as carrying a holdout blaster up her sleeve. So who thought it was a good idea to put her in a costume with no sleeves? It sounds dumb, but it's just one of those little things that my, makes my costumer brain go, ugh! And there is art of that costume that looks great, and there are people who wear that costume that look great. There is one girl I follow on Instagram, and she does Mara with the Great Lakes Garrison of the 501st, and the reason that I love her so much is that she is, to me, the epitome of Mara when she was the Emperor's Hand, because people get so caught up in the badass hot chick in catsuit thing, they forget she was only 21 when the Empire fell. Palpatine straight up stole someone's child, turned her into a weapon, and made her believe that the things that she did were for the greater good. So it, I love it when I see a young cosplayer, and especially someone who has a very sweet face, doing Mara because that was what I always pictured, this baby-faced assassin, that there's something really, really chilling about that, that not only did she have this cover story that she was at court basically just to be decorative, to be a dancer, but also that she ha looks very innocent. And there are ways in which, even as the Emperor's Hand, she was, there is a peculiar innocence about that because of the way that Palpatine manipulated her and made her believe that what she was doing was serving the good. It's hard to get mad entirely about making the most interesting thing about a female character be who she married when the person she married is the main protagonist of the entire saga. So I get that, but at the same time, Emperor's assassin turned smuggler turned Jedi, and that's the first thing you think of? Really? One of my favorite things about Mara is that she was very well established as a character in her own right before there was ever any consideration of matching her up with Luke. And in fact, Timothy Zahn created her. He has said that he never intended her to be a love interest for Luke. She was a foil to him. She was a challenge to him. And the friendship and the relationship that grew out of that was all the more interesting because there was not this end game in mind. Mara got the chance to be established as her own person and literally her own person in the sense that she had reinvented herself twice by the time she became a Jedi. She spent all of this time working so hard to build a life that she could call her own, which is something she had never ever had. She spent her whole life up until she was 21 never questioning that she was special because of the Emperor. And when that was ripped out from under her, she had to start from nothing. And that nothing included a huge grudge 
that was partially this programmed compulsion to kill Luke and partially the loss of everything that she had had. And now, of course, we're at a place where all of that EU stuff is no longer considered canon. It's been rebranded as Legends. You're talking about 30 years of story time. There is no practical way for them to say, yes, all of that still exists and try and tell stories around it. It's impossible. So the approach that they're taking with slowly pulling in pieces a bit at a time, which they've been doing since the Clone Wars with the Witches of Dathomir, with some of the cultural stuff about Mandalore, or some of the other cultural stuff about the various races and cultures in the Star Wars universe, is slowly coming in. I do like what they've done with Thrawn on Rebels. I was really skeptical that they could make him fit because he's part and parcel of the very kind of military SF tone of that trilogy of novels. But the way that they have used him and how they have made that fit into the Rebel storylines has been really fascinating. But of course, I was one of the people who, when, when, as soon as we heard that we got Thrawn, there's a tsunami of going, okay, where's Mara? <laughs> and first of all, Assuming that you kept her timeline basically the same, at the point of Rebels, Mara is 14 years old and already killing people for the Emperor. I think they could do it. I think it would be interesting. Um, I'm not holding my breath. And I'm totally in the camp that would love to see her brought back into canon. I think there are a lot of reasons that she would fit in very well with the stories that they're telling and the themes that they're emphasizing both on, Re in, on Rebels and in the main movie canon of what it means to determine for yourself who you are, to determine your morality, to determine your place in the universe. These are all questions that were very central to her characterization. And of course, there's the thing, you know, the joke that I made to a few people at the Rogue Run prem One premiere and cock my thumb over to Ray and say, well, she got those brain eyes from somewhere and it wasn't from Farm Boy. I would actually be 100% okay with a canon Mara who doesn't get involved with Luke because I love Luke, I love their relationship, I love how all that played out in the EU. If it doesn't fit in canon, I'm okay with that. I think that the character that Timothy Zahn created, that other authors and that the game developers expanded upon would fit very well with the story time. Well, they would, where they would put her, I don't know whether she would be in flashbacks in main movie canon, whether she would be this baby assassin on Rebels, where of course you already have the Inquisitors and you have other intimations of Palpatine having taken four sensitive children and used them for his own purposes, um, which is all quite different from what he did with the Emperor's hands. It would still fit in the sense of her thinking that she is the Emperor's hand and that she's the only one because one of the things that I loved in the novels was her reaction to finding out that she was not as special as Palpatine made her think she was. And this is, you know, years and years after she had accepted that everything that he had sold to her in her childhood was a lie, she was still so deeply insulted and offended that there was another Emperor's hand. It's kind of embarrassing to admit that one of my primary reasons for wanting them to bring Mara back into canon is so that people will know who she is. And also I'll have a new costume to do and hopefully it will be one that I like. I know she means a lot to a lot of other people in fandom. There was a really interesting article a while back that someone wrote about the importance of Mara to a lot of women in the fandom because she was the first well-developed serious female character other than Leia that we had. And so Mara offered something different and she was really, really important to a certain generation of fans. Much the way that Ahsoka is for some of the younger girls who came along. I will put a link in the video description to the article about what Mara meant to this particular writer because I think it's really interesting. I'm getting to where I don't mind as much having to explain who she is because I love her. I get the chance to say to people, she is more than Luke Skywalker's wife. But that's always going to be a thing. And maybe that would be a re even be a reason to make her not involved with Luke if they do bring her back into canon. Let her just be Mara. Because Mara is interesting on her own. I'm fine with it either way. I'm fine with Ray Rey's green eyes coming from her if Ray is in fact a Skywalker. 
whatever. But I do look forward to taking her to more events. If and when we find out that they're bringing Mara into canon, that loud boom you hear from the vicinity of Chicago will be my head exploding. So what do you think? Are you familiar with Mara Jade from the books, from the comics, from video games? Would you like to see her brought back into canon? In what way would you see that happening? Let me know in the comments below. May the force be with you. And until next time, bye-bye.